Today's book review is actually a two for one. We're going to talk about good pictures, bad pictures, junior, and the standard good pictures, bad pictures. These books help to talk to your children about pornography and to help them understand how they can react when they come across something that is inappropriate and explicit. So let's get right into the review. We're gonna start off with the junior version of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures. I would say this book is great for preschool and very early elementary kids. It is a hardbound book and it is very easy to read and understand. So there's lots of pictures and there's very limited text on each page. Now, what I really like about Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior is it does try to help get the kid involved and make sure they're paying attention and doing things. And the one way they do that is right here in the beginning, it's going to say, can you find 19 hidden cameras in this book? And it has this picture of the camera. So as you're going through the book with your child, they can spot the cameras and help them understand a little bit more and get them a little bit more involved in reading the book. Now the book starts off and helps them understand what pictures are, where they're displayed, and what kinds of things they can see inside of pictures. And then we talk about what good pictures are and what makes us feel good about looking at the pictures. And what I really like about this book as well is these little kind of post-it note looking things. And this is going to help you have a discussion about what is happening in the book. So this one says, what good pictures do you like to look at? So this is asking your child questions, getting them involved in the story and helping them understand the concepts that are in the story. So once we've established what good pictures are, now we need to talk about what bad pictures are. So here is another little post-it note. It says, grown-ups use a big word for bad pictures called pornography. Again, I feel like it might still be a little bit too much for them to understand, but you can say the word pornography, help them understand that word, but then I think they should have helped make it a little simpler to proceed through the book with maybe a different type of word. Like, um, you know, you can still just use bad pictures or something like that. But um, the concept of pornography, it's a large word. It's hard to understand, especially for this age range. So I, I would like to have seen a little bit different there. So then it explains exactly what pornography can be. So, you know, private parts that we cover with a swimsuit. Um, here's another discussion point, like what does private mean? So I think that's an important concept for them to understand as well, what we need to be kept private and what, um, what kind of pictures would be private. And so it's going to a little bit more of what that means and what privacy is and what we should be keeping private. Now, here are some of the places that you might see bad pictures. So it's talking about your phone, a tablet, a computer, a TV, even in the store. So it's really helping them to understand where these bad pictures can be found. I really like this page here where it's kind of helping them understand that it's like poison. Um, you know, cleaning supplies, while they can be good, they can also be very dangerous. Um, I would have loved to have seen another discussion point post-it note here about how bad pictures can be like poison, um, but I really like the way that they kind of compared these in a way that kids can understand. So it does compare here. So bad pictures are like picture poison. Um, I really like that. And then, you know, stop, that's a bad picture. And then what I really like here is that it's saying if you see bad pictures, it doesn't make you a bad person. Um, it just means that you've seen something bad. So then here's this next discussion point. Have you seen any bad pictures and where did you see it? We'll get into the next book, the older kid book, but it has this plan, this can-do plan. What I like here is it's a very simplified can-do plan of what they should do when they encounter a bad picture. So turn, run, tell. I love that this is kind of like the stop, drop, and roll. It's really simplified words that kids can quickly grasp and understand and know exactly what they're going to do when they come across a bad picture. And then I love this here, this practice. So practice this, turn your head and cover your eyes with your hands. So we're going to practice this turn, run and tell. 
So then, so you've turned, now you're practicing running and now you're practicing telling. So, you know, you're gonna tell your parent, I just saw a bad picture. So then we've got a lot of text right here for a kid, but it's going to kind of break down everything that they've learned in the story and help them understand in a really simplified way of what they should do, what they should look out for and how they should handle coming across pornography. So this is the end of the story that you would tell with your child, the end of the book per se, as you're going through it with your kid. However, if you're a parent, don't stop there. There is so much good information in these appendices. So tons of great advice of what you're doing, how to respond when your child comes to you that they've seen a bad picture, um, how to help them overcome it, why what you're doing is the right thing. There's just a ton, a ton of great information in these last pages um, that, you know, I would buy a book of just those last pages because it's so good. So, and then it's just some advertising for the next book. Um, so let's go ahead and get into that book. But I really, really love this junior version of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures. Perfect for that preschool, el early, early elementary kid age. Um, what I really love like about this is it's not something that I'm just reading and then like explaining to my kid. It's something I'm reading with my kid. And that's a good thing about the next book as well. So this is like my number one top recommended parenting technology book. I really can't say enough good things about it. It's got um, really easy to understand, helps you have this conversation with your kids. I'm always talking about having these conversations with your children. So make sure that you pick this up if you've got the early elementary preschool age kids. But let's go ahead and talk about the next version of the book for the older kids. And I, I'm saying older, but this is still going to be probably elementary age kids. So here's the good pictures, bad pictures, original. I'll, uh, this is the revised and updated version, but um, this is the first book. The junior came a little bit later. But again, the one thing I really like about these books is that it helps you have a conversation with your kids. I will say I kind of like the junior version better, but I do really like this book. It has a lot of really great information. So uh, the first thing is, just like in the last book, don't miss the appendices. Don't miss the beginning of this book. This is a great tool to help you have these conversations conversations with your kids. So, you know, there's five tips for using this book and helps you really kind of get a foundation before you start using the book with your child. So definitely pay attention here. Don't skip these title pages. So here's what I don't necessarily like about this. You are, it's kind of a story within a story. So you're reading this book with your child and it's about a parent reading this book or, you know, kind of going over pornography and uh, and the concepts with their child. What I would have liked to have seen a little bit better, maybe just explaining the concepts kind of like they do in the junior version, where it's not I'm sitting down with my mom and having this talk. It is more I am reading this story because right now it's a story about a parent having this talk with their child. And so I think they could have changed that up a little bit where it's it's not like I'm eavesdropping on a kind of awkward conversation. Um, I would like it to be more of a way to facilitate that same conversation with my child. So you could read this to your with your child or you could use this as a way to mimic what they're doing in the story and do that in your own life. So here in the story, they're talking about pictures, right? She's sitting down with her child and they are going through a picture album. So what you could do is mimic what's going on here and sit down with your child and go through a picture album and do this conversation without this book, um, but just using this book as a guide to how you have this conversation. One part I really like about here um, in this just this first section is when we're trying to establish what pornography is. Um, it's showing them how it can be viewed. So different ways that you might come across pornography. And I think that's a really important ground line to set for kids to understand when they do come across it. Oh, I've, I've talked about this scenario. I've been in this scenario or whatever. So it can help them understand like how they come across it. 
So, and then the really good parts about this book is these let's talk discussion points. So it's basically a workbook. And again, this is what I really like about this book is you're sitting down with your kid and you're working through it together. So with this workbook, it says, why is it important to keep private parts private? Um, so we're really just establishing what pornography is and how it can be viewed. So the next section is going to be what is an addiction. So we've established what pornography is. Next, we're going to talk about what an addiction is and how that can be damaging to your brain. And again, we're eavesdropping on this awkward conversation between mom and kid. So we could just take what they're doing here in this conversation and have that same conversation with our child. But then we've got these talking points again where we can do this workbook together. You know, what kind of things can people become addicted to? What addictions are harmful? And really helps you just understand what an addiction is. The next section is talking about your feeling brain. So one of the concepts of this book is that there's these two parts of your brain. There's the feeling brain and then there's the thinking brain. And you need to have your thinking brain overcome your feeling brain, especially when it comes to pornography because when you come across something, it might make your brain, your body feel good or maybe make you curious to see more. So that's going to be part of your feeling brain. And so this section is going to go into exactly what that concept is, what the feeling brain is, and have a really great scientific explanation that kids can understand about what the feeling brain is. Again, I like this section. I would read this whole section with my kid um, because, again, it's not like where you're eavesdropping on this conversation. It's more of an explanation. So I really, I mean, it still has those um conversation -y parts to it, but I think it has a lot more um, scientific reasoning behind what's going on. And then again, we've got these talking points here that we can fill out with our child. Perfect at the end of every little section. And then it's going to go into the thinking brain, as we already talked about. And now that we know what pornography is, what an addiction is, what your thinking brain and what your feeling brain is, how do these two brains work together? And so it has a really great analogy here about ice cream. So the analogy is that there's an ice cream truck and you really want the ice cream. So your feeling brain wants the ice cream, but you are going to run across the street to get this ice cream. Well, your thinking brain makes you stop and go, oh, hey, wait, I need to look both ways or I might get hit by a car. My feeling brain really wants that ice cream, but my thinking brain is going to stop me for a minute to make sure it's safe enough to go get that ice cream. So I really love that analogy because I think it's something that kids can really understand that, you know, they don't run out into the street, but there is something that they really want on the other side of the street. So I love how they thought of this whole analogy. So now we're going to talk about the brain's attraction center and basically like what pornography will trigger in your brain in order to trigger this attraction center. So again, discussion points on the attraction center. And now we're going to talk about how pornography triggers the brain and triggers that attraction center and how damaging that can be. And what I really like about this section is they talking about how as you are viewing pornography, then it gets complacent and you need more and you need something different in order to continue to trigger that attraction center. And what it compares it to is toys. So, you know, you get a toy on Christmas Day, you play with it so much, maybe for the next like week or month or whatever, six months down the road and you haven't touched it in forever. You're on to the newest toy or whatever else is striking your fancy then you've become complacent and bored with that previous toy. So I think that's a concept that kids really can get behind because they understand exactly what happens when, you know, you can even compare it with a toy that you know that they played with a lot and then they are not playing with so much anymore. You say, hey, like, you know, what about that doll that you were so excited to get on Christmas Day? When's the last time you played with that doll? And then they can understand, oh yeah, I can see how my interest wanes after I've been 
around something for a certain amount of time. And now we get into the, like the real meat of what they can do in order to combat pornography when they come across it. And this is what they call this can-do plan. Um, and just like the other plan where the kind of stop, drop, and roll, this is a little bit more involved. So the can-do plan is C, close my eyes, A, always tell a trusted adult. Again, so like I said, it's not these simple stop, drop, roll or turn, run, tell. It is kind of a whole sentence. So it's a little more complicated. Um, so close my eyes, always tell a trusted adult, name it when I see it, distract myself with something different, and order my thinking brain to be in charge or be the boss. So we're going to go through these can do things. So can close my eyes, always tell a trusted adult. It's just going to detail out exactly what each step means so you can go ahead and practice it. It's going to have this great thing. You can download it. There's going to be a link inside here to allow you to download this. You can put this near your computer, you know, hang it up near where they're going to be using a device. And then again, we've got some more discussion points to help you really hone in this can-do plan and help you practice it. And then here in the story, we now get dad involved. We're We've had the conversation with mom. Now we're having a conversation with dad. Again, I would probably just have these conversations instead of maybe going over this section. And it just kind of seems forced that like we've been having this conversation with mom. Now we're getting dad involved. And it seems a little like, you know, the dad's like, hey, I heard you were talking to your mom about pornography. I think this last section could be a little throwaway section. You might not need to go through it. But definitely go through the last bit of discussion questions. Fill these out with your kids. Really help you have these conversations. Finally here, again, don't miss the appendices. We've got vocabulary words. So if your child is still confused about something, you can look up these kind of vocabulary words. We've got cravings and chemicals and things like that to really help them understand these concepts. And then again, some more tips for parents, how to help your kid if they've come across it, what to do in these scenarios, and some maybe examples of like how to help them forget what they've seen. And then again, we've got some like links and some advertisements at the very end here. So all in all, I highly, highly recommend both of these books, especially if you have kids in these age ranges. Uh, it's really going to help them understand what is damaging about pornography, help them come up with a plan when they come across it. Unfortunately, currently the age of first exposure to pornography is around eight or nine years old and it can happen anywhere if they can come across it accidentally a friend of theirs could show it to them there's no way for you to completely protect yourself and your kids from seeing pornography so it is important to help prepare them for when they do see it and preparing them early is even more important. If your child has access to the internet at all, at a friend's house, at home, wherever, if they have access to the internet at all, they should already know about pornography and how to avoid it. Uh, even preschool age, you can say, if you see naked mommies and daddies, cover your eyes, you know, do the turn, run, tell. Um, I really like that very simple stop, drop, and roll type of reaction. So the earlier you're talking to your kids about this, the more protected they will be uh, for when they do come across it because they will. So definitely go check out those books. I've got links in the description for you to purchase them. They're right available on Amazon. If you like these book reviews, please give this video a like so I know that this is the kind of content you are still interested in. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you are not already subscribed. I've got a lot of great parenting resources, parenting technology resources. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me on social media. I am Family Tech on all platforms and will respond to my direct messages. So make sure you're following me over there as well, and we will see you next time.